Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition, our Let's Play series against XTRG, a fellow YouTuber who is playing on the side of the Japanese. Uh, it is February 26th of 1942 in our Let's Play series. The Japanese have advanced far further than they did historically, taking New Caledonia, driving south into Espirito Santo, uh, and also uh, beginning the assaults on the um, islands in and around Java, sort of the Dutch East Indies, if you will. Uh, you can see here we had a sub here at Buna firing against an enemy patrol boat, um, or was it attacked uh, by an enemy patrol boat? In any event, nothing happened. Uh, thank you for the bits, B uh, like a G man. Uh, meanwhile, there is a surface action that is occurring near Tulagi. As you remember, we sent two British light cruisers on a sprinting run into Tulagi. Unfortunately, uh, these cruisers have shown up at night, which is not good for us. If these cruisers had shown up in the day, I think this battle uh, would have been a, a wipeout, uh, or at least a pretty confident victory. We'll see what happens here now that they're fighting at night. The Japanese get massive night fighting benefits, um, and while our ships do have... Uh, some radar and other advantages for fighting at night. The British experience at daylight fighting on these ships is in the 70s, which is tremendous. Their night fighting is in like the 40s, uh, maybe 50s, which is not so great. Uh, whereas the Japanese are not quite reversed. They're decent at daytime fighting as well, but they have big benefits. And I think there might actually be some actual like perks in the game that, that give them an even bigger boost early in the war in night fighting. Uh, so we'll see. We found trouble, you're right. We went looking for trouble, and we found trouble. The question is whose trouble is going to be <laughs> is going to be worse. It looks like the dragon is taking a lot of damage. We did get a good shell hit there on the uh, Yakuza there. Oh no, a torpedo right into the side of the light cruiser, the dragon there. Um, British light cruiser just took a torpedo. I think that was a long lance. Um, our other cruiser, I think, is the Enterprise? Or... Is it the Enterprise? I don't know. It's another British light cruiser. The Dragon is the lesser of the two cruisers in terms of quality. Um, the uh, the Dragon is, I think, like 23 victory points. And the other cruiser here, the Enterprise, is like 30, I think. Um, the Enterprise is, is a better ship. The Dragon is still pretty modern, a 6-inch uh, treaty cruiser era type cruiser, although not a heavy. Um, whereas the Enterprise is a bit bigger, a bit more uh, more powerful here. Dragon is still shooting back. We've got the Hakazi and the Yakuza both smoking, although that dark smoke on the Dragon and the fact that we took a torpedo is not super encouraging. The Enterprise is finally returning fire. She took a while to get into the fight for whatever reason, and she's shooting at the undamaged Japanese destroyer and not doing much about it. Dragon continuing to fire her uh, broadsides here at the Japanese. It seems like, oh, there's another shell hidden to the Dragon. And another shell hit into the dragon. Good to know that we can't hit anything. Uh, hey there, Brass Monkey. How you doing? Uh, we're in the middle of a night fight near Tulagi. That is not going well for us. The dragon has one torpedo in her side, uh, and she is continuing to return fire, but is taking quite a bit of damage. Six-inch shell, or sorry, six-inch gun mount destroyed. Another six-inch gun mount destroyed. Uh, belt armor hit there. Uh, it is not looking good for the dragon. We've put a couple of shells into the Japanese ships, but... They don't look to be super badly damaged. The dragon's probably a goner, guys. Even if it survives this fight, I doubt it's going to be able to make it back to Australia. Um, but we'll see. More shell hits here. Continuing to return fire. She's a plucky little bugger. But none of her shots are hitting, so plucky but not very accurate. Just probably panic firing in the middle of the night now. Now four-inch uh, secondary guns getting demolished by Japanese destroyers. I would hope I would get at least one of these Japanese destroyers. I mean, honestly, I was prepared to lose both light cruisers. I really, you know, the Dragon is, like I said, the, le the lesser of the two. And at the end of the day, one light cruiser is probably worth one destroyer to the Japanese. Not in terms of victory points in the game. But the Allies have so many light cruisers um, that uh, that I think, you know, I would, if I traded every every light cruiser for every destroyer, Japan would pretty much have no more destroyers, and we would have like 30 more light cruisers being constructed. There goes the Dragon. She sank. So she sank in the battle. So the Japanese fire has now shifted to the undamaged Enterprise. 
uh, which is returning fire all on its lonesome there. It got a hit on the... I can't make out the name of the Japanese ship. That red text blends into the background of it. Um, okay. Nice. A good shell hit there on the Histok or Hatahakazi. I'm not even sure. Um, and a nice shit, er, nice shit, a nice hit there on the Akazi as well. Uh, a double explosion, another hit! The Enterprise is, is fighting back for her lost brethren, uh, getting several six-inch shell hits there. Um, the Japanese two destroyers on the south, their smoke has turned to dark smoke, indicating serious damage on those vessels. Hopefully we'll get at least one of them. Uh, meanwhile, the Dragon is well below the waves. And the Enterprise continues to be undamaged and uh, and firing back uh, with gusto. You can see here this gun battle is going on for quite some time. 9,000 yards, pretty close range. We just have to hope the Japanese don't have any more long lance torpedoes that they can throw at uh, this this cruiser. I think the Dragon, was that a D-class? Or, or I'm not sure. There are two post-war, um, mid- or interwar cruisers um, with radar and reasonably quality crews. Uh, they are British, so they're probably better than us. It looks like the Allied commander has decided to disengage, and the task forces break off. So Dragon took two torpedo hits, 28 shell hits, and was sunk. The Enterprise only took one shell, so she is probably perfectly fine. Four six-inch shells went into the Hastaki. Heavy fire, or sorry, heavy damage on fire. And the Yakuzi uh, took four shell hits and heavy fires. So hopefully one or both of these vessels will sink. Uh, meanwhile, the other Japanese destroyers suffered no damage. Obviously, the fight didn't go in our favor, but again, at the end of the day, if we can cripple multiple Japanese destroyers and maybe sink one of them, uh, I, I think people underestimate just how many light cruisers the Allies have. Um, so I will, I will take that. It was not the end of the world. It wasn't the best result, but so far, anyway, it's not the worst result. Um, hopefully, those light cruisers make it out... Jesus. We remember we sent our heavy cruiser, the Louisville, into Port Moresby to try and uh, bombard the Japanese troops there, and she just dodged a torpedo. Six torpedoes from a Japanese RO-61 submarine operating there. It had been getting a little bit boring, guys. We got to keep XTRG on his, on his toes. Here's the other thing about this. Um, you know, we didn't, we didn't, the battle didn't go as well as I would have liked. Uh, that being said, I think there is something to be said about keeping XTRG on his toes. And I think in the South Pacific especially, we've gotten a little bit too passive. And while I certainly don't want to throw away cruisers regularly, at the end of the day, I can't just sit back and Sir Robin it the whole way. I've got to do some things to force him to keep substantial forces in and around his bases. Now, obviously, and around his convoys, obviously these destroyers... You know, they did their job, they protected it, but it will make him think that this could happen again and may, you know, may in some way force him to kind of keep larger forces together and be aware that we can strike out against him. Oh, the dragon was a 1917 destroyer? Okay, I didn't realize that. And apparently one of the destroyers there that we that we battered around a lot uh, is one of the best destroyers in the Japanese Navy. So that's also a very good trade-off. The Japanese have a fair number of destroyers. They also have a lot of older, not great destroyers, kind of like the U.S. four stackers. But the newer ones are tremendous. So every one of those we can sink is, uh, is worth its weight in gold. Even though from a victory point perspective, I'm sure it won't favor us. It's, it's, it's more about bleeding him down over the course of the war. Uh, like six or seven victory point destroyer versus like a 20 point, dis you know, cruiser. The There's like a 50, 15 point differential there in victory points. But at the end of the day, you know, that's the equivalent of like one bad fighter sweep. It's not a huge, a huge deal. Meanwhile, the RO-61 still hanging out here. Our uh, armed merchants there trying to trying to get them with their depth charges there. We're moving on to the air operation phase in the AM period of time. Louisville is... What did it say about the Louisville there? Observes dive bombers near Port Moresby. That's great. 
We haven't really seen much Japanese air activity in and around Port Moresby, but now we are seeing a whole load of GAM or G3M2 Nels. So that's good. All right. A lot of recon going on. We'll fast forward through some of that. All right, Japanese fighter sweep by the looks of it over Sorobaya with zeros involved, a 6M20. So we'll have to take a look and see if they're from a carrier or if they are land-based aircraft. I'm gonna fast forward through this air battle. I'm guessing that didn't go great. Uh, one zero destroyed versus three of our own aircraft. Could have been worse. Uh, does it tell me which group these zeros came from? It doesn't. I wonder if the other combat reports or ops reports say. That's a pretty large air group, so I don't think they're carrier-based. The only way this would be carrier-based in a single, single formation of 25 zeros, I think, would be if it's off one of the large flat tops. I'm assuming these are land-based zeros. Although I guess they could fly coordinated with another, like if they had two mini carrier groups, but I, I don't know. I I would still put my money on land-based. Meanwhile, 18 G3M2 Nels are attacking a destroyer here near Norfolk Island. As a reminder, we're unloading a infantry battalion of Australians on Norfolk, basically to act as a speed bump if he does make an effort to drive south toward New Zealand. Um, was that a torpedo? I didn't quite see, but in any event, he, uh, yeah, he put a torpedo into the side of one of our armed merchant ships. I think that's only one or two victory points. Not a big deal there. Also, hopefully he burned 18 torpedoes there, because I think 10 torpedoes are a 1,000 supply, or is it a 100? In any event, torpedoes are expensive from a supply perspective. So now we know he's got torpedo uh, planes operating out of what looks like Nomaya, which is problematic as well for us. That means we have to move even further south down toward New Zealand. We have to be very careful about aircraft moving around in this area. But he has revealed to us that he has Nels operating out of New Caledonia, which kind of effectively shuts off the Western Australian coast as well uh, from enemy or from our shipping, unless we hug the coast. Uh, so that's not good. This, the, the fall of New Caledonia is most detrimental because of what it does to our ability to operate along the Australian coast. Um, yeah, we could try and bomb uh, Nomaya next turn uh, like Ajiman. We I don't think we had any planes operating there this turn. 16 Nels apparently operating out of Rabal as well. Uh, dropping weapons, attempting to drop weapons. No! What? That was multiple torpedoes into the side of the Louisville. Two torpedoes into the side of the Louisville. Heavy damage. Fucking A. Well, Moresby's toast. I can't reinforce Moresby or really do much with... Uh, Australia's gonna get invaded, guys. This is just the reality. There's no way Australia doesn't end up with Japanese troops landing on it before long. I'm gonna bet that sometime in March he's gonna land on uh, on Moresby, or land on Australia. Probably middle to late March he will begin the invasion of Australia. Japanese bombers are hitting Singapore. There's quite a few of them. 44 Sallies, 36 Nates escorting, and 22 and dive bombers and eight Lilies. We damaged a fair number of them. Hopefully there's a couple of ops losses there, but nothing really to write home about there. Uh, thanks for the follow, Kurtz Krieger. Um, seven more Sally's coming in on their own. Six more damaged. Flax doing a pretty good job of shooting them up. I just don't know how damaged they really are. You know, it's kind of like, that'd be great if they, if they can't fly for a couple of days, but it could just be like a single piece of shrapnel in a wing. Recon over Rangoon. Eight more Marys coming into Singapore. One of them destroyed by Flak. That's nice. Japanese, our Chinese bombers here are trying to hit these Japanese troops on the other side of the river. 
I am somewhat mindful of opera using bombers in China because they do eat through a lot of supply and I don't have a lot of supply to use. With that being said, I also am planning on forcing a river crossing, if not this turn, then next turn, whenever the troops arrive, and I need to make sure that I'm doing an adequate job of keeping the enemy suppressed. We'll see, Brass Monkey. I think he's going to make a landing in Australia before too long. Meanwhile, we've revealed our hurricanes to him, as well as some of our flying tigers over China. Um, these guys are flying escort for the 33 bombers that are coming in. Hurricane 2A tropes, tropes? Uh, and then our, uh, our flying tigers. Look like the flying tigers got shot down. Uh, we're in the midst of a fierce air battle before, between 14 Oscar 1Cs. Looks like we just got one of them. And 12 hurricanes. So the British Air Force operating in China. We're getting in behind them, getting a couple of them destroyed. These are some some quality British pilots here shooting up an Oscar squadron a little bit. A couple of kills. They've even the odds. It's now 1-1. One, one. Tortuga, the, the Australian forces in this game are very much glass jaws. Uh, especially the troops we already have in Australia. They are mostly militia and will get completely steamrolled by Japanese troops. It's more about, like, minimizing the damage and holding them at bay so we can counterattack in the second half of the year when things start to switch. But uh, two more Oscars shot down. Nice. So we are chewing this formation up. That's almost 30% casualties. Although we do have the 6th Australian Division on the way to Oz. On, on the way to Oz. So that is uh, some very good results. And more Oscars are getting shot up. All right, we'll fast forward a little bit. So the bombers made it through without loss. They dropped their payload. Six Oscars, six 1C Oscars destroyed. I think there's like three different variants. I think there's the Oscar 1A, 1B, 1C. So these are the newest of the Oscars that I think he has right now. Six of them shot down. We lost one Flying Tiger in H81A3, and we lost uh, two SB3 damage damaged. Didn't really do much damage with the bombers there. We, uh, we disabled an infantry squad. Those bombers were largely ineffectual. But uh, but uh, that's a lot of Oscars. We destroyed almost half of his cap over that over that base. It's interesting that he's flying such a long range cap out there too. I get he's got troops there, but um, okay. So we've got some Dutch bombers coming in. There's some more Oscars here. Two of them are uh, probably providing cover over some Japanese shipping. They are. Uh, three Oscars coming in, trying to drop their payloads on the Sundari, another Japanese light cruiser. Uh, one of them gets destroyed by flak. One's damaged. No bombs hit their target. Two DO-24Ks, Dutch planes as well, coming in. More Oscars flying cap. One of them makes it through the cap. Light cloud above the target, attacking the Japanese APD. No target, no hit there. No losses on either side. Four of our PBY-5 Catalinas. Uh, are coming in as well. One of them gets knocked out by flak right away. The other guy... Oh, there's a heavy cruiser in here. Four of these guys came in. One was destroyed. It looks like he's got the Miyoko, uh, one of his heavy cruisers here at Bandar Jasmine. Bandar Jasmine is the base that is going to shut down Java. Probably make using our carriers in this area un untenable as well. Uh, because once he gets Nels in there with the support he needs to be torpedo armed... He's going to be able to fly Oscars and Zeros out way around toward Christmas Island and cover all of the island of Java. Okay, so we've got nine A-24 Banshees, which are the Army Dauntless Dive Bombers, and then 12 Whirlaways um, hitting the Japanese troop at troops at Moresby. One infantry squad disabled, not a very effective rate. Eight B-17E Flying Fortresses coming in from Australia. Dropping their payloads on the Japanese troops there. Another 10 Japanese troops lost. Another squad disabled. B-17s flying out of Fiji. So as a reminder, we flew some B-17s into Fiji. They're operating out of Suva, and they're coming in toward Espirito Santo. Seven bombers coming in, uh, dropping their payloads on the uh, runway there, attempting to damage it a little bit. Uh, you can see here his Oscars were ineffectual. Our bombers were dropping from 15,000 feet. They were using their normal payload of eight 500-pound bombs, so they were within their normal operating radius. We did suffer one bomber damaged uh, and six runway hits there, so I don't know how effective that was. 
Meanwhile, we've got two Banshees coming in on some Japanese cargo ships at Buna. Uh, they didn't do any damage there. That's problematic. If he's pouring supplies into Buna, that's going to be what he needs to, to get his division uh, moving against us at Moresby. Meanwhile, eight more B-17s coming in in a second raid. Whoa, wait, what was that? 500-pound bomb hit directly into a Japanese sub. Another 500-pound bomb into a Japanese sub. Another one! So, remember, we, we ordered some of our bombers to hit the, run, the runways. We ordered other bombers to go after the port there. So you can see here we got eight B-17s, three Ds, five Es uh, on the raid. One bomb into the I-25 hit. That had to cripple it. I mean, a bomb into a, into a, into a sub is going to do a lot of damage. And three into the I-175, and she's sunk. Nice. All right, we also got one more airbase hit, six runway hits, two port supply hits. Now, uh, the bombers that were going after the airfield were bombing from 15,000 feet. I don't know what the star means. The bombers that were going after the port attack, only three of those bombers were going after the port attack, and they were coming in at 1,000 feet. So as a reminder, XTRG and I kind of reshuffled the house rules, and one of the house rules that changed is that I no longer have to have four-engine heavies at 10,000 feet or higher. Um, so after the sort of paratrooper, paratrooper kerfuffle, um, we, we reworked some of the rules around using paratroopers, although uh, XTRG agreed to give me some time to get garrisons out and other things like that before he would start, um, you know, being a little bit more loosely controlled in terms of how he used them. Uh, and one of the rules that was changed, frankly, in my favor, is the, is the uh, removal of the 10,000-foot uh, restriction on four-engine heavies. So I can now fly those guys at lower altitude and effectively skip bomb uh, port objectives and uh, naval objectives. So uh, that's a good start. Two Japanese submarines, one sunk, one seriously damaged uh, with, uh, with uh, port bombing. So that's great. Okay. Moving into the PM phase here. More Nels doing a lot of recon here over Moresby. Hopefully they don't put any more torpedoes into our ships. All right, we'll speed through the recon. Quite a lot of recon over Rangoon this turn, it looks like. 12 more Nels coming into the port near Moresby. Dropping torpedoes on the destroyer Stuart and Pope, uh, or are, I didn't see actually, are they torpedoes? They could have been bombs. I'm just assuming with Nels that they're torpedoes. Yep, they're launching torpedoes. So hey, that's 12 more torpedoes. He's burning through torpedoes, and again, torpedoes are expensive in terms of supply. So the more he spends, the better. Um, I think it's 10 torpedoes is 100 supply. Uh, but anyway, so 12, 12 torpedoes dropped there. Nothing hit our, our troop ship, which is unloading some cargo. The, I think the troops are all off it now, uh, and the destroyers. More air combat here over China. Apparently two of our Flying Tigers flew north. I definitely did not order them to fight there. Two fighters versus 59. That'll, that won't turn out. So those two H-81s, we damaged eight Sallys and six Sonyas. I'm guessing most of that's with flak. A little bit of damage to our troops there. More Flying Tigers and British aircraft flying in the north. I did not order them up there, but this is a slightly more advantageous situation for us. Only nine enemy fighters uh, for the second wave of bombers coming in. We'll fast forward through this as well. I didn't quite see what we hit. Looks like we at least got one of his aircraft with flak. We got a Sally destroyed, a Nate destroyed, two Ida's damaged, and then we got an Ida and an Oscar both destroyed. So um, one Oscar destroyed in air-to-air -air combat, one Nate, one Sally, and then one Ida destroyed by Flak. We didn't lose anything there, so that's a pretty good result for us. Another Japanese raid here, an even smaller one escorted by Nates. There's Sony's coming in here, our flying Tigers intercepted them there. No Allied aircraft shot down. We, we destroyed one Nate, damage to Sonya. 
We're getting some pretty good rolls on the air to air combat over China, it seems. DO-24, one of them's coming in against the Japanese task force here, against the Azuzu. These Dutch bombers can't hit shit. They're coming in low, too, aren't they? Oh, no, they're coming at 11,000 feet. That's a mistake. I should have brought them in lower. Two Catalinas coming in. Oscar intercepting. One of them makes it through. Were those guys coming in high, too? Why am I sending everybody in at 11,000 feet? All right, some army banshees coming in here at Buna, going after the Japanese cargo ship. Yeah! Thousand pound bomb! Another one! Woo! Nice. So these guys are pretty crappy. They have, uh, they're bad. Hey, one into a, into a patrol boat, too. Nice. They, uh, these are army bomber, uh, army dauntless bomber pilots, and they, I don't think they had very good experience ratings, but we got two bombs into the side of a cargo ship and one into a patrol boat. I imagine that patrol boat will sink with a bomb like that landing on it. The cargo ship might sink, too. Two hits and heavy fires. Thousand-pound bombs are big fucking bombs, um, especially hitting Japanese ships without much in the way of deck armor, especially a cargo ship. You can see there it hit an enemy ship. He's carrying additional troops into Buna there. Um, that's uh, part of the excitement, I think, is that we killed 123 Japanese uh infantrymen or, or whatever they are soldiers um with four squads destroyed 10 disabled probably sank this ship um badly damaged another and hopefully cut off additional supply that he would have been putting into buna to support his attack on moresby but i mean we really haven't sunk many japanese merchant or cargo ships to this point in the war so anytime you get to sink sink or probably sink a japanese ship that's you know that's important that that uh that's helpful. I mean, I'm sure by 1944 I won't bat an eye at sinking enemy cargo ships, but apparently temporary flooding on uh, repairs are failing on the Exeter. That's not good. <laughs> the destroyer Pope valiantly sails in and launches its three inch guns against the Japanese infantry division. No damage. <laughs> uh, why are all those ships having temporary flooding problems? Or temporary repair failures all simultaneously? All right, Japanese bombardment attack at Singapore, so they gave us another day off. Well, not another, actually. They attacked yesterday, right? Is this one day off or two days off in any event? That Imperial Guards division has a really low AV. I wonder if we wrecked that division. They must have been one of the divisions in the initial shock attack when they came across the river. Either that or maybe they split up and this isn't the whole division. But that's a if if that's the whole division, that's a that's a pretty big deal. That's a good division, the Imperial Guards division. And 57 AV? All right. The 18th and 5th are in good shape. But yeah, I think this division started with like 300 AV when it came across the river at Singapore, if memory serves. And I don't... Maybe I'm just making a big deal of it because, because of the name of the division. But I think it's one of their better infantry divisions, too. That was a pretty good turn for us. So he tried to bombard Singapore, but counter-battery fire actually destroyed more squads than the attackers. So... 65 Allied casualties, 154 Japanese, four Japanese infantry squads destroyed, only one Allied infantry squad destroyed. So that's uh, that's a good turn. That's four victory points to one. It was 400 like a G-Man? No way. They have a 400 division? Well, Jesus, if, again, I don't know if that's the whole division, but if that's what came across at Singapore, that division is fucked. Japanese delivered attack here at Cheng Tha. Didn't they attack here last turn? It's hard to keep some of this straight, but it's a, a major attack here in the north at Cheng Tha. I think they attacked here last turn and we beat them. We'll see if we can beat them again. You can see quite a lot of AV dropping on our end. They reduced the fortifications to two. They must have been three previously. 1,700 assault value attacking, 1,300 defending. But when you adjust for the fortifications and the fact that this is also good defensive terrain, I believe, 
uh, it drops them to a 1 to 3 assault level. The engineers do reduce the fort level from 3 to 2, and that happens before the attack, so otherwise this would have been even uh, more difficult for the Japanese. Uh, that's a pretty good result, though. So we lost uh, 11 squads destroyed, 17 guns, 212 disabled. So the troops got battered up a bit. But he lost seven squads destroyed, 20, or 294 disabled. He lost 2,821 men. We lost 2,223 men. Um, I would say that battle went in our favor. Um, more disabled troops on his end. Slightly more destroyed on our end. But in terms of victory points, actually, it favors us. Uh, because the Chinese are, are less valuable from a victory point perspective. And uh, another attack. Uh, defenders get plus for terrain. Minus for op mode, minus for preparation, minus for experience. The attacker had no combat modifiers. I think we were in move formation trying to get out of that hex. Meanwhile, he's taken Nanyang. Remember, we pulled our troops out west um, just a little bit. He had two brigades and uh, actually three brigades. We probably, if that's the whole formation he had there, we could have beaten him there. But I didn't want to get flanked. I think that was my main concern, is it's easier, especially with everything going on in central China. I would rather have these troops fall back up this road and potentially be able to move into Sischunking when the assault there eventually reaches there. So, they took the base. Japanese delivered attack at Wenkao. Another attack here. We'll see if our forces hold. They do. One to two assault odds. Fort value is already at zero. Japanese lose another 1,275 men, 81 squads disabled, one squad destroyed, one non-combatant destroyed. We lose 32 squads destroyed. We lost one unit. One of our uh, battered units uh, was destroyed. So Wang Kao is, is falling. It's just a matter of time. I think the question is whether he can afford to keep up the deliberate attacks or whether he needs to slow down a little bit. Well, here we go. Well, this is, maybe you're right about the Imperial Guards because the 56th Division is over 400 assault value also. But you can see they're attacking now, although they just got a big drop on their assault value. They're attacking us at Moresby. They do have an engineer regiment here as well. The engineer regiment doesn't have very much in the way of assault value here. It looks like they reduced the fortifications to level 2. They don't take the base, but they do remove the they do drop the value from 3 to 2. That's a 1 to 2 Japanese assault. 912 casualties for them, 14 squad or four squads destroyed, 89 disabled. We lose 15 squads, 27 disabled. We also... Oh, we didn't lose any engineers. That's weird. Zero to zero. Okay. Um, anyway, so defender modifiers, plus for terrain, plus for forts, minus for preparation and experience. Uh, the attacker, meanwhile, was apparently fatigued. So perhaps um, a symptom of moving through the mountains and not pausing enough. Um but, uh, yeah, so that's not good. I mean, with that division, if he's able to get enough supply in there, Moresby could easily fall in the next two or three days. I'm assuming with this fatigue penalty, he's probably going to wait a day before he launches another attack at Moresby. But um, Moresby will probably fall within the week, assuming he has enough supply there. Meanwhile, Japanese continue to deliver an attack with the 2nd Raider Regiment. It doesn't have any assault value. Granted, our defenders really don't either. We've got almost no infantry in this hex, but he keeps trying to push us back, presumably because he's planning on capturing these troops here on this on this base over here where we just had that last battle, and he's trying to interdict the supply coming down from Chungking down this major road. But um, five Japanese adjusted assault versus 196 on the defenders. One to 39 odds. Eight or ten squads disabled, three engineers disabled. If if the AV that we remember being at this base was right, like they've got nine hundred men with thirty six AV, they just lost ten squads disabled. That that formation is pretty much wrecked. So that's about a thousand men uh, in that formation, but they're probably a goner. Meanwhile, a bombardment attack at at Kaigan or Kaigan or Kaigan. I don't know. It's on Mindanao. It's our it's our Bataan on Mindanao. We've got uh, really the best formation here is the 102nd Filipino Army Infantry Division here, um, and he's got a bunch of SNLF forces uh, and uh, a battered infantry regiment. He tried to attack here a couple turns back and failed in his assault, and now he's trying to soften us up with some bombardment with some heavy guns. Japanese deliberate attack at Kunching. Forces their hold. 1 to 1 assault odds. They reduce the fortifications from 2 to 1. The Japanese lose 273. We lose 43. 
That's actually a fair bit of, uh, of disabling of Japanese troops. 35 squads disabled. That is not a good result for him. The other thing is, like, every time he launches one of these attacks, while we often don't necessarily win in the victory point perspective, we need to remember those squads disabled, they take time. He needs to pull them out of the line to get them refreshed so that they can, you know, they can continue attacks. So it's sort of a situation where it probably doesn't matter as much for this guard unit because he's probably just going to use it as a garrison. But he can only take so many squads disabled before he has to pull a unit back and let it resupply and sort of wash supply over it and let it recover. And that's time, and time is money, and time is, is everything for the Japanese at this stage in the war. So everything we can do to delay him is great. Meanwhile, uh, another uh, assault here in central China, uh, a Chinese uh, sort of um, uh, collaboration force, the 23rd RGC, uh, Temporary C Division, so it's a fragment, attacks uh, what's left of the 21st Chinese Corps, 14 casualties on the Japanese. Our troops will probably starve out there eventually, but... Uh, meanwhile, bombardment attack at Ambon, 10 Japanese casualties, none for the defenders. I think our supply there is really low, so we'll have to take a look at that. Uh, but overall, I'm actually pretty okay with that turn. We lost the light cruiser, which kind of sucked a little bit. Um, but uh, we did some bad damage to two Japanese destroyers. We, uh, we hit a Japanese cargo ship pretty badly. We threw back a couple of Japanese assaults with, with quite a bit of, uh, of bloodshed. Um, and, uh, and overall, I think, I think that was a reasonably good turn. I mean, Moresby's gonna fall, that's, I think, the depressing thing, and he did reduce the forts there, so that's the bad thing, but also not super surprising, right? Like, when he showed up with a full division there, I think I, I it was sort of, it was gonna, we were gonna lose, so we knew that. Um... We'll have to take... Oh, I forgot about the Louisville. She took two torpedoes. We'll have to take a look at the Louisville. Riding the luck dragon tonight. Uh-huh. I don't know if I was so lucky that turn or if he was lucky. The dragon was supposed to show up in the day. If those guys show up, showed up in the middle of the day, that would have been a tough day for his destroyers. Hey, creative bolt. All right, let's take a look at the uh, Louisville first. Uh, where is she? She's still at Morsby. Surface combat. Oh, that's not bad at all. Five cis damage, two engine. There's no way she took two torpedoes. That must have been fog of war or something. Which is weird, because I would think that, like, that wouldn't happen to us. But I guess it does. So, good result. <laughs> Let's get the hell out of here. Full speed back to Brisbane. I am not going to tempt fate again. Um, I'm not sure what got hit. Well, the St. Michel, or Michel, the, uh, the AP here definitely got hit. 72 system damage, 39 float. So how valuable is this? 12, not that valuable. Okay. Let's return to Brisbane with you guys. Cancel unloading. All you have is 27 supplies left. That's not worth worth sticking around for. Um actually maybe better off just going directly toward uh toward Cooktown. Just get directly as far away from Rabal as I can. I don't know how far he can reach there. It's one, two, th oh, assuming he's flying out of Rabal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I think he can carry torpedoes out to like 15. So he'd be like at the extreme range of his torpedoes with where I'm trying to run the, uh, the AP to. The uh, Pope, meanwhile, should be able to get out of there easily before daylight even. And um, same for the Louisville.
Meanwhile, I'm not going to send that mine layer up to Port Moresby anymore, so I guess we're going to return that back to Brisbane. The one thing I'm not super clear on is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. What's the um, torpedo range here on the Nels? Because that's what we saw over that way, right? Normal range is what you need for torpedoes, so 15 hexes. Jesus! So one, two, three, four. Yeah, so, and I think no, Comac is probably one closer. Jesus! Out of Comac, his Nels could carry torpedoes all the way to the Australian coast. I don't know if he's built up the airbase there enough to, to run him out of there, but it's only a matter of time. So this whole eastern Australian coast is pretty much shut down to us. He can't hit Brisbane, thank God, with torpedoes anyway. But uh, but yeah, meanwhile, Nomaya. Yeah, we have to stay south of Raoul Island as well. This narrow corridor in here is kind of where we have to go. It's also why I shifted this battalion into Norfolk Island, is to at least delay him, because that is a big enough base to, to base Nels out of. Granted, I think running supply that far down would be very challenging. Um, is it possible to shut down the Japanese airfields with the amount of B-17s I have? I don't know if I can shut them down or not. I got a couple of hits, but I somewhat doubt I did too much damage to Luganville. Um, that's his biggest base that we've identified so far. Comac, I think, is a two. And, uh, or sorry, not Comac. Nomaya is a two. Comac, I don't know. Last recon was zero. Um, Espirito Santos, meanwhile, has a level four airfield. Um, and still some shipping around it. Um... But, yeah, we'll probably have to funnel supplies to Oz either th directly through New Zealand or south through, uh, in this corridor down here. Um, it adds, like, 20% commute time to our, to our sailing. So it definitely makes things less efficient for us. But it's also, hey, listen, we've got to do it. We can't just surrender that area. Uh, meanwhile, with Port Moresby taking the beating it did, I probably need to look at getting our air forces out of there as well. These Banshee pilots did a good job last turn. Um, for Look at these experience levels. They're all in the f below 40, and they put three bombs into Japanese shipping. Man, they're, they're, they're heroes. All right. Um, I can run a lot of supply into Perth. I've been running a lot of supply into Perth. Um, you can see here we're unloading... 14,000 fuel, or maybe we're not. We should be unloading 14,000 fuel into Perth. Uh, we've already got over 170,000 fuel. Australia can make pretty much all the supply it needs. It has a lot of industry, a lot of industry that can turn fuel points into supply points. So... Um, these guys are headed out. By the way, we saw some temporary flotation failures on the Exeter, I believe. Where is she? Uh, what are these guys? Oh, we're bringing in anti-aircraft units and light anti-air and British anti-tank guns into, uh, into Perth. I forgot about that. They were coming in from Cape Town. So it looks like we've got the 85th British anti-tank gun. Uh, regiment, which uh, is TOE is, yeah, that's a good amount of anti-tank guns. That'll be useful if he lands in Australia with armor. Um, tankers headed back to Cape Town. Where did those cruisers go? Are they off map already? I didn't think they made it that far. No. Why can I not find them? Uh, list all active ships, heavy cruisers, Exeter. Where are you, Exeter? Task Force 148. Apparently you are off map. Okay. 
Surface combat. So, okay, so they might have had some temporary flotation failures, but nothing actually all that serious. You can see here we pulled out a bunch of Dutch destroyers and some light cruisers and, and some other ships that suffered some damage um, in the western Western Pacific. Meanwhile, these guys are unloading fuel at Cape Town. Cape Town's up to 125. These guys will return back to um, the East Coast as soon as they're as soon as they're done unloading. I don't know why it says loading complete. They should be unloading. Um, okay, so trying to think of what to look at first. I guess probably China. Uh, like a G-Man because it's the only yard I had out in that direction, to be honest. Also, that yard won't be overworked for very much longer. Before those ships arrive, I think the yard will be underworked. So if you take a look at this yard here, 80,000 capacity, 82,000 is in use. However, in three days, the Queen Elizabeth will come off the ways... Uh, fully repaired, and she will free up, what is it? 48,000 tons. So half the shipyard will be free in three days. Uh, in eight days, the Canopus will come off the yards, and that's another 6,000 tons. So we do have two battleships that are eating up a lot of the, the capacity and, and weight there. We've also got a tanker, the Gertrude here, uh, coming off in uh, 20 days, 5,000 tons. Um, so in terms of... Uh, uh, in terms of, well, you're right, she's off the yards, but she still counts toward the 80,000 capacity being used, I think. Or maybe not. Well, what are these? These are 35. Oh, I guess I'm wrong then. Queen Elizabeth is already not counting toward that. Well, we'll have to figure it out. Maybe we'll move Exeter to the British East Coast. Uh, that's an option. The U.S. East Coast is also an option. Um, but I don't have any on-map uh, repair yards where they, can, where they can effectively be used, so... Um, the yards in Perth are too small. The yards on the Australian East Coast, I think, are too small. Yeah, that can only take 10,000 tons. Sydney can take... Well, maybe she can take 30,000. But the on-map ones aren't as efficient, and they're within the combat radius, so... In any event... Colombo gets a benefit to its efficiency because it's off map. That, or no, sorry, Colombo does not. But um, but Cape Town gets a big benefit. Off map shipyards are way more efficient. Same for like the U.S. West Coast is way more efficient than um, than Pearl is at repairing ships. Okay. Also, Colombo could be in range of where he might. Uh, where he might bring some uh, some carrier strike forces at some point. All right, so that's enough of that. What are we going to look at? We've been going for almost an hour now. Um, the attack at, uh, at Changtha did not go in his favor, but we also ate a lot of supply. We've only got 40 supplies in the base, so these attacks are chewing through our supply. None of these guys are completely out of supply. Uh, most of these units, like this guy's way low, but he's not out. 55th Chinese Corps is at like a third of its supply. We're trying to get these guys out of the hex. You can see here they're at 29 miles. So they're a ways away still. Um, they need to get another 19 miles. No, I can't do math. 17 miles to get off the map. We could switch them back to move formation, and I think they could get there the same day as long as they don't get bombed by Japanese bombers, in which case they'll switch back to combat march. Uh, and it'll be two days to get them off. Meanwhile, the British Infantry Division did make it over the mountain. So the 18th British Infantry, um, 400 assault value, 440, made it over the mountain and into a hex, into Wazerup. Uh, it's three miles toward uh, Midhyank. Uh, so that's probably three or four days more marching. In three or four days, they'll arrive here. Then we can move them into strat mode. That'll take three days. So a week from now, They'll be ready to rail down to Pegu and reinforce our defensive there. 
And when they arrive there, they will more than double our defense there. They'll bring us up to almost 800 assault value. And again, that's important because as we saw down here at Singapore, the Japanese Imperial Guards Division appears to be pretty damn shot up. If we can wreck another division in the defense of Singapore, that would be great. Um, that Imperial Guards Division is probably going to be out of action, I would guess, at least a month uh, trying to recover, uh, which is a month that he can't use it in invading Australia or something else like that. Um, but we'll see. Molman, meanwhile, has two enemy units. They've increased the force there, but I don't know with what. If they're just sort of Royal Thai forces, then I'm not as worried. Uh, meanwhile, all of our troops made it out of here, so you can see his armor was, or um, I assume it was his armor. We saw his armor attack over this way uh, like a turn or two ago, um, and so we pulled back. Uh, looks like there's 14 units here, and he's got another 21 trailing. Yep, it's his armor. You can see here the AFVs, there's zero in this base, and you remember he had like 10 armored units. They were out ahead of the rest of his infantry, so they were over-pursuing, trying to get at us, I'm assuming. But we were able to pull our formation out, so we've still got 5,600 assault value here at uh, at this this base here, south of uh, Chikikang. Uh, and um, we're just about to cross the river uh, against this one enemy unit. I have no idea how large this enemy formation is. I tried to do recon over there, but apparently we didn't pick anything up. We, uh, we bombed it, but I don't remember what the actual combat report said about what we were bombing. Trying to remember. I don't even know if I can find it. These things could be more. E these things could be easier to navigate and find stuff in. Ooh. Is that it? Chicky Kong. The fourth independent mixed regiment. He got a regiment there. Is that the right base? It is. How the hell did he get a regiment behind us? You transfer him in by air? They're not paratroopers, so we would have had to move him with, like, transports, which might explain why he had the uh, the cap over the base with the uh, with the Oscars. Um, huh. Well, I, I still don't think one regiment will hold up very well against the rest of our formation that's barreling down on it. You can see some of our troops are preparing to cross already. They will cross next turn. They're five miles away. We've moved them into combat formation, um, so we should be able to overwhelm them. We've mostly got good supply on all these units of ours. Some of the units are new to this hex. You can see 25 miles, 24 miles, 11 miles. So some of the units are a little bit newer to the hex than others, but I'm sending about like a thousand assault value across the river um, I'm hoping a thousand versus probably like at most. Well, let's see. His brigades are usually around 160. His regiments, I don't know what they're at. Like 100, 130, somewhere in there. Maybe 160, but 160 versus 900, we should have the we should have the edge there. We also moved in another core behind uh, Chicky Kong, so we've now I think effectively surrounded him. He could retreat east potentially to join up with his paratroopers. Maybe. I don't know if he can retreat into a hex with enemy troops. Um, there's troops behind him. There's nowhere to retreat to north. So we might be able to crush this guy and destroy him. That's the hope, anyway. Because um, we're going to be shock attacking because we're going to be crossing a river. So there's that. Uh, meanwhile, our uh, 46 Chinese Corps, one of the corps that was shattered at Shaoyang, uh, made it into Hanyan. And I thought there was only one unit there, but apparently there's three now, so shit. Okay. Good luck, boys. You got three squads. Fight it out. Um, in that case, if he's reinforced there, I think we're just going to move back to Quilan with those troops. Because if he's got any 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 meaningful force here, we're pretty screwed. Hey, Warthon, thanks for the, the subscription. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so we're going to move these guys back to Quilin rather than trying to move in toward Hanyan. I thought there was only one base here, uh, and I thought maybe it was something light and I could, I could attack it, but, um, looks like he moved more forces in here, so that kind of caught me by surprise. 
Uh, Wang Cao, meanwhile, not in good shape. Supplies low. The 100th Chinese Corps is down below 250 assault value. Um, they're at almost half supply. The forts have been reduced to zero. Uh, the base is battered. Yeah, so it'll fall before too long. Uh, Batan, meanwhile, still hanging out there, doing okay. 26,000 supply. The uh, Zeman, meanwhile, is unloading its supply. It has made it to Kaigan. It, is, it has 600 supply on board. It has 25 systems damage. But uh, that 600 supply would be very well uh, received uh, at, at the base here. So are we docked? No. Let's go ahead and dock and then uh, unload those guys. Like a G-Man, thanks for the bits. Um, yeah, we'll take a look at Batavia in a second, like a G-Man. So we're going to unload, hopefully get those 600 supplies unloaded here in a day, maybe two. Uh, and that will bring our supply up to 600, which is a little bit less than half the requested. Uh, but 600 additional supply should be more than enough to bring all these units back up to full supply. And uh, hopefully, I think, I, I don't know if it's a week worth of supply or not, but I would imagine it's close to a week worth of supply uh, here uh, to help us hold out on the island of Mindanao, continuing to deny the Japanese use to these 15,000 troops, uh, the infantry brigade that's there, and um, continue to tie as many Japanese troops up doing things that they would rather not be doing. Um, meanwhile, if we take a look at Batavia here, our assault value at Batavia is currently 766. We moved a couple of regiments. The 4th KNIL regiment here was moved to Batavia uh, via rail. We also moved the 6th KNIL regiment to Batavia. Um, set all to this. There's got to be a way to set everybody to this objective, right? Yeah. Start getting their, their prep values up. Most of them actually have pretty high prep values. Most of them were already prepping for Batavia. Uh, but you can see here we moved a couple of infantry regiments here. The 1st, 2nd, and 4th infantry regiments are all at this base. They all have great morale, apparently. Or at least many of them have great morale, although their experience kind of sucks. Like most Allied troops at this point in the war. But 766 assault value at Batavia should be able to tie up some Japanese troops for a little while. They're at level 3 forts. They're working on level 4. And I think it's also an urban hex. Uh, whereas, for some reason, Surabaya, which is our main port on the island, is not. It's a it's a clear hex. But this is an urban hex, so we get a big bonus for urban terrain. And there you have it. Some players would evacuate a lot of these troops to Australia. Um, maybe that's the right call. I don't know, but that feels a little too gamey for me. I think there's probably, and, and we've had discussions with this, so I know it's somewhat true, but I may be fighting at a disadvantage myself because I play and make decisions in a way where it's like I'm trying to recreate something that's a little bit more historical, whereas I know XTRG sort of approaches the game as more of a systems game as opposed to, a, as opposed to like, I'm trying to play World War II, which makes some sense from his point of view because he's playing as Japan, so the game's already pretty heavily rigged against him. Um, but... Because of how steamrollery the Japanese are, I know some players will evacuate as many of the units as they can, either from Java to get them into Palembang to form a fortress there, because Palembang is also a swamp hex that produces all of the own supply it needs, or whatnot. But, um, yeah. Um, so anyway, I guess what I'm trying to say is I may lose, and I may not do as well as I should because I'm not min-maxing. Uh, whereas I think XTRG is min-maxing, but that's fine. Um, the APD formation here at Bandajer's Min. You remember we saw the APDs in our air attacks. And um, another task force here. He's landed troops at Bandajer's Min. Um, I don't imagine our troops will hold out there very long. The Southeast Borneo Regiment or Battalion, only 24 assault value here. Um, supplies are already low. Should probably fly our L212s out of there. As many as we can, anyway. We're just going to disband this group. 
I don't want to. I don't want to give them free units destroyed as the base falls. I don't know if that really saves the victory points or if he gets them anyway if I disband a group, but we'll get them out of there. Okay. If we go take a look at the troops at Moresby. I don't know what unit we lost. But I feel like we're one unit less. Yeah, I think the C company got destroyed. I don't remember seeing that in the combat reports. Did it say there was a unit destroyed in the combat results? Huh. Oh, well. Um, so we lost C company of the Port Moresby Brigade. Didn't really hurt our assault value all that much. We were at like 300. We're down to 275. So we lost about 25 assault value in that attack. I don't know if the troops gained any experience. You'd think they would. Their fatigue is pretty high in the 20s to 30s. It'll be interesting to see if he launches another attack this turn. I wonder if he has the supply for it. Probably should move our air units out of there as well, if we think he could take the base this turn. What's the terrain of... I can't even see. Is it jungle terrain in Morsby? It's a malaria zone. Okay. Um, if we take a look at the turn, 13 air-to-air -air losses for the Allies, 16 for the Japanese, 6 Japanese aircraft destroyed by flak, 5 op losses. Apparently we lost 13 aircraft in ops losses. So if we look at this day, 14 Oscars we're claiming were destroyed, 13 via air-to-air, -air, 1 via ops. So that's a pretty damn good day. Uh, that's a lot of Oscar 1Cs. Again, that's the better of the Oscars, I think, anyway, that he has. Uh, you also lost five Nates, which are kind of crappy aircraft anyway, but pilots are pilots, right? So any pilots destroyed over our bases, over, over well, I guess it was his base. It was over China. It was over the base he took. But hopefully most of those guys are KIAs. Uh, we lost five 75A7 Hawks, Dutch aircraft. We also lost five Hurricane 2A Tropes. They're all ops losses. I wonder where the ops losses came from. Maybe they were damaged and crash landed or something over China. We lost four H-81A3 Flying Tigers in air-to-air -air combat over China. Three uh, KI-51 Sonyas were destroyed. Three Dutch CW-21B Demons. Uh, two KI-36 Idas. Two Sallies. Two Kates. Both via ops losses. And uh, two L-212s. Two Blenheims. The Blenheims might have been flying over the hump. We lost one Fortress... So 26 to 27, roughly one to one losses that turn. I do want to tell you guys there was there was some bad news uh, for our forces this this day. Uh, the leading ace in all of the Allied Air Forces, a pilot with the Flying Tigers named T. Cole, he has eight kills, was killed in action. Uh, unfortunately, we have, that is the most senior ace that we have lost thus far in the conflict. We have now lost four aces killed in action. Uh, J.L. Brownwell of the 21st Pursuit Group, 17th Pursuit Squadron, a P-40E pilot. I don't think he died last. He was he was he died a couple a while back. Um, but we've also lost uh, a D.L. Obert, five kills, uh, another of the 17th Pursuit Group. Again, not this last turn. And C. Mott might have been lost this turn of the AVG Second Squadron, uh, five kills as well. Uh, so, unfortunately, we did lose our leading ace. We lost eight pilots killed in action, four wounded uh, this last turn. Yes, F in the chat for him. Meanwhile, ship sunk last turn. Uh, according to the intelligence reports, so we did lose 
the Chamont, uh, a 12 uh, victory point value AP, near Port Moresby to Japanese torpedoes. So that must have actually been the ship that was torpedoed when we thought it was the uh, Australia. Uh, or not Australia. The, uh, what was it? What was the American, like, heavy cruiser there? What was the name of The Louisville. Not the Australia. The Louisville. Um, so we lost uh, a cargo ship, or sorry, a troop transport last turn, 12 victory points. We lost the Dragon. Here's the light cruiser that was sunk near Tulagi. 61-centimeter uh, Japanese Type 93 torpedoes, a D-class or D class light cruiser. Carried a bunch of 6-inch guns, um, 7, no, 6,000 tons, um, unfortunately. Uh, and we're claiming we sank the Hatakazi. Um, six inch shell fire near Nudni, uh, which I'm assuming is somewhere around here near Tulagi, because that was one of the ships we saw in that battle, right? Um, and why else would it have taken six inch shell fire unless it was in that battle? Uh, only a six victory value, but I think she's actually one of the better Japanese destroyers in the war at this time. Also, yeah, that's a good point. Unless there was some misreporting, which is possible because we had our own misreporting about Moresby, but probably also sank a cargo ship near Buna, I would guess, and maybe a patrol gunboat as well. Uh, the cargo ship said heavy damage. It took 2,000-pound bombs, uh, and the uh, the PV didn't say heavy damage, but it did take a 1,000-pound bomb. I can't imagine that can take that much damage. Meanwhile, the Australian battalion that we're transferring to Nadi did arrive, uh, and so we can actually go ahead and do nothing, apparently. I thought they were arrived. Oh, there's still elements of it that are on the troop transport. So part of the 41st Battalion has arrived, not the whole thing. Some of it's still unloading. When that unloads in the next turn or two, then we'll form up the 1st Australian Infantry Division. We'll consolidate most of these units here into the 1st Australian Infantry Division. Uh, that is uh, on, uh, on Nadi here near Fiji. Additionally, we have uh, an American uh, regiment, the 161st and the 8th New Zealand Red Brigade. But these guys... Uh, by the way, what's the difference between a brigade and a BDE? I always treat them the same. Um, but sometimes they say BDE and sometimes they say brigade. And I don't quite understand if there's a difference. Um, because, like, over here we've got the Moresby BDE. But then this is the Port Moresby Brigade that is a subunit. So, like, I don't... No, B BN is battalion. 40, the 49th BN is the 49th Australian Infantry Battalion. So BDE has to be like some some other designation. Like, So I, I'm not sure. But anyway. Um, Suva's reasonably well defended with about 600 AV on the island all told. Um, reasonably good supply. Working on the uh, fortifications and airfield there. The B-17 groups appear to be in good shape. Uh, you can see here um, 30 aircraft, 25 of them are ready. Uh, so we could return uh, to uh, Luganville next turn if we wanted. Uh, we could also potentially go for Nomaya, uh, where we know he's got uh, aircraft out of as well, uh, and try and do some damage there. Um, but, yeah. Um, meanwhile, we're unloading, we're finishing unloading fuel at Christmas Island. We're trying to race some reinforcements into Palmyra. So we've got the 2nd U.S. Marine Field Artillery Battalion and the 2nd U.S. Marine Raiding Regiment uh, or Battalion on the way into Palmyra. I can't remember if it's a regiment or a battalion, but they're currently racing in there. Um... They won't get there this turn. One, two, three. One, two, three. So they'll be one hex away this turn. What's this? Tankers? What? Why would he have tankers? They're way too far forward. What the hell is this? Two ships spotted moving east. You think they're Kitty Butai tankers? Huh. It could be subs, right? Like sometimes the subs get reported as ships.
Hmm. Yeah, he could be, but why would they be here? Like if he was, if he needed tankers for the Kitty Butai because they were up near Midway a couple turns back, why, why here? Could they be that cruiser force we spotted? We saw the two we saw two light cruisers and like three destroyers at Baker Island a couple turns ago, but I don't think light cruisers typically get reported as tankers. I mean the report could be wrong. They might not be tankers, but usually you either see tankers or you see carriers. Like if a carrier is misreported, it'll typically be reported as an oiler or as a tanker, I believe. Um and vice versa. They could be transports, too, I guess. I don't know. I just know when I was talking to Belugan about doing, like, some some silly diversionary thing to try and freak XTRG out, Belugan told me, if you want him to think you have carriers, put either fleet oilers or tankers in the task force, and they'll get reported as, as, uh, as carriers. So I'm assuming it works both ways. Hit him with what, like a G man? I don't have anything down this way. All I have is some cargo ships. Most of we have some heavy. We do. I I did move some light cruiser or some heavy cruisers to the east of Palmyra to give some some cover to these uh, these troop ships as they move in. Severe storms at Palmyra. What does OD mean again? Clear sky, really? Shit. Well, we might find out. There's no detection value on any of our ships, but if it is carriers... We might get detection value on our ships. Oh, I hit the wrong button. That wasn't the weather forecast. That's deep ocean. Um, there. So it's supposed to be cloudy next turn? Or clear. C for clear. Okay. Well, we'll find out. Palmyra is pretty under-defended right now. She's got a marine defense battalion, and she's got... Uh, its own uh, defense. So we've reinforced it slightly, but not much. This task force is intending on reinforcing it much more substantially. We've got the second Marine Field Artillery Battalion here with some heavy 155 millimeter artillery pieces. Um, and then we've also got the second Marine Raider Battalion, which has another 40 assault value. Not a ton of additional reinforcements, but it'll more than double our defensive capabilities here, or almost double our defensive capabilities here adding a third artillery unit and um, a, a infantry unit here. I think I've already ordered the Wake Defensive Battalion to be, re to be remade. If we take a look at... Uh, where is it? Ground units destroyed. Um, let's just show... So there was a base force unit that we haven't rebuilt yet. Cost four political points to do so. Everything else that we can rebuild, we have. Rebuild that base force in San Francisco. Um... Meanwhile, one of the task forces, we loaded up with some ships, uh, some stuff for Australia. Uh, the 754th Tank Battalion, the 8th Pursuit Group, 100th, 110th Combat Engineer Battalion are all on their way to Australia. They're also bringing a little bit of supply with them. 
Okay. Um, and then we've got the Americal Division down here already on its way. Still a ways away, 169 hexes away. Only moving at about three hexes a day. I should, I need to do a better job of like pairing my super fast transports. Like these three cargo ships with 19, 22 knots. Even this one, the Santa Paula, 19 knots. The Rochambeau, the Santa Maria, 19 knots all told. Those guys should be blitzing across the ocean. I shouldn't be allowing three ships with 14 knot speeds to be slowing us up. But I am. All right, these guys finished unloading their fuel because I sent them back so they could pick up the swarms of, of aircraft that we have on the East Coast now that I transferred a lot of stuff that way. Palmyra, what's its aviation? It has aviation support of 25. It's only got air, eight aircraft there. Let's go ahead and send some of those. We just flew a bunch of Catalinas out to Pearl from San Francisco. So let's go ahead and send some of these guys out to... Uh, Palmyra. I'm assuming they can get to Palmyra. Yep, they can. So I think we're going to send... Do these guys have radar? They do. All right, we're going to send two Catalina groups down to Palmyra. I think that's going to put it over its aviation support. I think we'll send one... Well, that's, I don't want to strip Pearl too bare. We already have 24 Catalinas on Christmas Island, too. Christmas Island is the better of the two. Palmyra is somewhat isolatable, doesn't have a very large airfield. Christmas Island, in theory, could have a very large airfield. Christmas Island has a level 2 port, level 1 airfield. Palmyra has a level 2 airfield, but it's kind of maxed out, and it's an atoll, so it can only, you know, can only hold so many troops. Um, so Palmyra now has slightly more AV than it can support. I think what we're also going to do is we're going to go ahead and, uh, give these guys, switch these guys over to Naval Search, set them to a hundred, set on map. Isn't their range way longer than that? 17. Why does it look so short? Why would they only be flying out that far? Do I have them set to ASW work? Is that why? Oh, I think it just changed. Yeah, it just changed. I think it was because I had them set to AS, ASW. All right, so we're going to scan that way, see what we find. We could definitely close this gap here between Hawaii and Johnston Island now if we had... Uh... All right, let's... Swing these guys south. Nice. That's exactly what I want. Probably shouldn't have them set to 100. That's not sustainable. Okay, so off Johnston Island, we've got a great sweep from midway all the way south. Out of Palmyra, we're going to have a Big sweep with these new Catalinas as well. So if he is sending something, anything further east, we're going to get a good visual on him. What I'm curious about is how did we pick him up there? I don't have any recon that goes that far out. So how did I detect these guys? Was it a sub maybe? Actually... Let's clear this guy's route. Let's send him out this way too. Maybe at flank speed. We'll stick around.
get two subs out ahead of whatever that, whatever that formation is. If they are tankers, we should be able to chase them down and get ahead of them. Um, SIGINT, what do we see here? Radio transmissions. Where is this? What, what hex is this? 152, 129. I don't see anything about, about that hex. Okay, so he's moving a base force to Swing Kang, not a surprise. Nothing. Hmm. I don't know. We must have detected it somehow, whatever it is, unless we just like somehow made up a report and it's not really shipping, but we've got good, I think we've got a good screen here now. Um... I'm going to let these guys be random. We'll have one of those Catalina groups as random. Probably can't hit anything. I mean, the Catalinas can bomb, I guess, if it is something that we can bomb. But... Working on that pork capacity at Vavu. I guess, yeah, the ops report could show. One of our pilot losses apparently was a Vincent pilot in New Zealand that was killed on landing. We also had a P thirty or P forty three Lancer damaged on landing. Meanwhile, in terms of China, we flew a bunch of supplies into Kuming. Twelve load stars, ten DC, eighteen DC twos, some twenty five, thirty six, thirty six Blenheims, eighteen DC twos, twelve Hudson three A's, some B seventeens and B third or B twenty fours. Wait a minute. So it says SI-175 is reported to have been sunk near Luganville. So we didn't get credit for that kill according to our last turn ship losses, but this says it is. Meanwhile, loss of the Dragon is admitted, loss of the Minesweeper, DeLorean, Whipperwell, Cargo Ship Henry. Interesting. Okay. Huh. Well... I think that's going to do it, guys, for this episode. We've been going for about an hour and a half. Uh, I think I have some things to think through before I send the turnover to XTRG, but I probably won't do that on uh, on, on on stream right now. Um, but 
By the way, uh, Buffy Dingo, thank you very much for the uh, the subscription. I just saw that you subscribed. Ploesi, Nman121, Pig Power, thanks for the follows. Appreciated. Biff Hopper, also thanks for the follow. But, uh, but yeah, I think we are going to wrap this up. Um, oh, interesting. So we spotted one ship that was moving west over here, and now apparently this one ship is moving east. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to do it for tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I'll think through how I want to respond to XTRG's moves this turn. I think, you know, this was a really interesting turn. There was a lot of interesting stuff that happened in this episode. And um, I think next turn will probably be the same. We're going to be crossing the river here at uh, Chikikang. We now know there's the 4th Independent Japanese Infantry Regiment here. I'm imagining it's not the whole regiment. Like, if he transferred it via air, which he... I mean, that's the only way he could have gotten it there, is I think most of its heavy equipment would have had to be left behind. So they probably have a fair about amount of assault value. You know, it might be around 100 or so. 100, 120, 130, whatever a regiment actually gets. Um, but then when we cross the river, they won't have a lot of their heavy support weapons. I imagine they won't have much in the way of artillery, and we're crossing with 900 assault value. My hope is we can destroy whatever he has here, and then move east to destroy the paratrooper unit as well, um, and then uh, you know fully free up the rear of Chengtha. Uh, the troops we have here will probably continue to pull out. They're currently at uh, 29 miles, so they probably won't make it out of there this turn. It'll be interesting to see if he attacks here again. I expect in the next turn or two another attack on Singapore. They attacked Singapore one or two days ago. I can't remember which. Uh, he's definitely going to wait and see and let his his troops rest up a bit. But he's gonna he's gonna continue the pressure based on what XTRG has told me. You know he's he's regrouping and he's trying to regain the momentum. So I imagine Singapore will be assaulted here before long. Uh, I'm pretty excited about the fact that I think we wrecked the Imperial Guards division though. Bander Jasmani will probably fall next turn. He won't be able to operate uh, air units out of it this turn, but maybe next turn even. That's a level three airfield. If he's got if he's got any um, aviation support there with the the force that he landed, we could very rapidly see Java turn into a into a no go zone. Um, and that's the situation right now, guys. the the biggest The biggest developments really were in the Solomon Sea and the Coral Sea. We had the uh, first loss of a, a ship in. Uh, the Solomon Islands chain, uh, which historically had many ships sunk there. It was the Dragon, which was sunk up near Tulagi. Uh, the Enterprise is hopefully making a clean getaway uh, back to Australia. But uh, we know that he has GM3 Nels operating out of, I think, Rabaul. Uh, and then we also know that he's got Nels operating out of, I think, Nomaya. Which means that pretty much the Australian coast... North of Fraser Island is a little bit safe uh, in toward Townsville, but even toward Britspain, like we have to hug the coast or we can get torpedoed. He was launching torpedoes out at shipping near Norfolk Island, so it's uh, it's pretty da dangerous. I think is he in range of Fiji too? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. No, so Fiji is just out of range of torpedo bombers out of Nomaya. Um, and I think they're also just out of range of Esprit de Santos because their bombers go in there were 17 hexes. So he doesn't yet have torpedo bombers capable of shutting down Fiji, which is good for us, um, but we'll see. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoy uh, this um, this turn and uh, in this series. And until next time... Um, the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.